good uh, has it started yes yes you can start uh, shall i start yes yes please okay okay uh, yeah so hi everyone a uh, very good morning and welcome to meals of mysore meetup group so today we are going to start with the first session of the year so we have our speaker vijay kumar here and he's going to talk about state management news of uh, so yeah uh, like uh, for your information the session will be recorded for your future reference and you might find the recording in the mysore meetup page or our youtube channel and this session is meant for learning purpose so feel free to interact you can um, unmute yourself and ask question or you can also put your question to the chat box so before we start uh, let me to the organizer of uh, Mysore Meetup uh, group. So we have Bum Charasya here. He is currently working with Billinium as a professional integration developer. He is a of ambassador, of Meetup leader, and also of mentor and speaker. Then we have Giridhar Mika. He is currently working with Hajjan as a technology architect. He is also a of ambassador, of Meetup leader and mentor. And here I am. I'm currently working with ATI Mindtree as a senior software specialist. And I'm a Mules of mentor, speaker, and Mules of meetup leader. So now I would like to ask Vijay to start the session with the introduction. So thank you, Vijay, for joining. Uh, you may start from here. Yeah, OK. Let me show you. Yeah. Okay, uh, talking about myself now, uh, again, my name is uh, Vijay Kumar and I have overall experience of 4.5 and currently I'm working with Hasdin as a senior engineering management specialist and I have completed my certification in MCIA and, uh, and uh, MCD level one. Okay, Starting uh, with the topic, first of all, now, so today we're going to discuss about state management uh, in mule applications. So basically, uh, our agenda will be to uh, discuss different way uh, data can be managed or state can be managed in mule application. There are multiple ways, mule event, object store, uh, VM queues, batch job, scope queues, file based persistence, and then external data store. Then we will look into the optimal method, okay, the pro and cons, which should be better to use. Uh, to manage state uh, depending upon the requirement and the trade-off which we have to do basically uh, when we choose one me method or over other. Then we will explore the state implementation, the, how this uh, uh, state implementation happen in mule application specifically for two runtime, which is Cloud 1.0 and Cloud 2.0. We have different runtime, but we will only explore two uh, for VM queues and uh, Cloud Hubs. Then we will just talk about example and then yeah, question answers. So starting, uh, so managing state in mill application. Basically we manage state, correct? Uh, to store data somewhere in external system or or in a, in, a, in a way to share data for future use cases, okay? Generally we use external system like the database, VM queues, uh, queues, so using these ways, we share and store our state in general application. But we will provide uh, different ways also, uh, which we can leverage to make to optimize our solution. State uh, preservation generally happen in two ways, like the, the, the way we do is one by caching or by publishing to VM or GMS like we do. In caching, we can use object store, like we can use cache scope. We can use file based or external storage in queue we can use uh, in mule vm queues or gms or any point mq also we generally use uh, what we call state management uh, for access token to store access token temporarily to uh, filter out the unique messages we also use state uh, uh, management basically to fall back in case of application fail so that we can leverage the data stored in our uh, system to again retry also we, we use uh, state preservation for watermarking also 
So in meal application, uh, what are different ways uh, meal application help us uh, to preserve? We will start with meal uh, event. So in mule event, uh, basically it is an in-memory object, correct? Is an in-memory object which carries a state. And uh, we can use it uh, to store uh, the message in the flow. So whenever uh, whenever we want to carry a, a state in a flow, we can use mule event. So how we can use variables, payload, attribute. In this way, we can carry the state in one flow via uh, transport particles transport particles or in, in our queue also like we can use this event basically to make sure that uh, flow remain uh, stable and we can pass it on to the flow in a single flow using variables and payloads so the demerit here is that since the mule event gets stored in the jvm heap as soon as the flow complete we will lost the state and it can be used uh, inside in single application or single flow itself so we cannot use or you cannot share the event with other applications other applications until unless we use transport protocol but still that will be lost if the flow crash or flow com flow completes okay uh this is about new event moving on to next uh, uh, way which is we can store state using object store so object store again is a uh, basically a key value pair a kind of uh, store mechanism which we use in our means of which which basically help us store the data there are different ways uh, we can store correct uh, data in object store in mule application it get we part with the default object store instance which is or automatically get uh, selected in object store uh, we again have two different type of object store correct one is persistent and non persistent depending upon the requirement we can choose either of them to store the state and if you if you choose non persistent which is in memory in memory uh, kind of object store uh, we generally use this for small data or to sync up the data which is not needed and data will be uh, loaded every time when the server start and second type is, is a persistent in persistent uh, object store generally used for big data and when we need to sync up the data and data will survive even if the crash happens and the behavior of object store uh, basically it changes different de depending upon the runtime also in cloud 1.2 there's a different behavior and 1.2 is a different behavior we will look into it uh, after after this then third is basically using the vm queues so in uh, in MuleSoft, VM queues are configured as transient or persistent, okay? And we can basically use VM queue uh, to share the state in our single Mule application. So if we have to uh, share the state in the flow in our single application from one flow to other flow, we can use a VM queues. It can be either transient or persistent depending upon the requirement. If you need to make sure that uh, data or the state remain uh, remain uh, intact we can use persistent because if uh, app crash it will still be available in in the in the disk in case of transit it will be lost so depending upon the requirement we can configure vm queues transit or persistent we can also use vm queues to share a state uh, between different uh, workers in the cloud of also so when whenever we horizontally scale our application correct we have multiple workers if you need to uh, distribute load correct the load we can use vmq which can help us share the state that's third way how mule application uh, uh, help to store the state fourth option is by using uh, bad job queues so when we use bad job queues now we generally use it for a large data set and basically in what happened here now, initially data gets stored in the mule event the input which is a basically a stream where large data comes in they hold it hold it in the mule step mule event and then later on when uh, it goes into processing the all record individual record get break up split up into multiple record sections and get stored in the persistent queue so what helps here now it helps in storing the state of the last data when we're processing large data it will help us storing that state even something goes wrong that those data will be available in the persistent queue of batch 
so that so that they can be reprocessed again uh, so what happened bad job uh, have uh, storage which is ephemeral for example bad job queues generally get created in the uh, ec2 disk in, in case of cloud 1.0 or a local disk in case of cloud 2.0 if you reprovision those uh, uh, worker or replica, uh, those uh, information will be lost. So that's why if a storage if ephemeral or reprovision happen, we will lose the state. Otherwise, in case of crash, the data will be available uh, for us to reprocess in bad job queues. We can use bad job queue basically using a bad job scope in, uh, in Mule. Moving on to uh, the next, which is using file-based persistent, okay? So file-based persistent basically, uh, and again, uh, whenever we provision a worker or replica, uh, the space or memory get allocated in our disk, which can be leveraged for st uh, storing the state. We can use file connector basically to access these uh, access these uh, files in our worker or or a replica, which is basically a temporary file or like location with slash temporary or op slash storage, which can be used to uh, store the state. Again, same here, this, this uh, file storage is again ephemeral. If you reprovision the worker or the replica, the, uh, the state will be lost. And again, since this is stored in the worker, it cannot be shared across different worker or node. And it is also not transactional. We cannot uh, do transaction activity on this worker, on this file storage. But we can use this file based persistence if required. We can access the, this location and store the state there and uh, reuse it in case of Department demands. And at last, which is uh, external storage, which is general way we use it. Basically, we uh, whenever we need additional guarantees, uh, transactional guarantees, re resilience, correct uh, performance, we use external storage, which is a database, which can be uh, different, uh, what we call servers, S3 Redis, uh, external in memory data grid, which can be used to store the state and shared across different applications. We generally use this when we have to uh, share a state uh, uh, with different non mill applications also. We can use uh, external storage to do that. So this is there, these are different ways uh, which we can use in mill application to store and st st share the state. Any questions uh, till now on this, on different ways we can store state? state? I think we have one doubt from Pratik. Pratik, you can mm -hmm. unmute yourself and ask. You have raised an hand. You have raised an hand. Yeah, hi. Am I audible? Yeah. Uh, this is about the VMQs, as you said, in the persistence also, whether that persistent will work in CH2.0 also? No, no. In, CH, in Cloud of 2.0, VMQs, persistent VMQs are not available. It is only for 1.0. Uh, okay, and what was the first one I missed that uh, before first, object store? First one is mule event, which is uh, generally why variables, uh, payload, okay. attributes, uh, we can share the state in a flow. Yeah. Or we can also use HTTPS or transfer protocol to share that same state to other applications. Right? Okay, so back to my first question. In VMQ, if you wanted to use persistent in Cloud 2.0, then how we'll be using it? Like uh, we do have any other way? To use a persistent in CH2.0? In CH2.0, there is no option to basically enable the persistent, correct? Uh, VM, uh, persistent uh, VM queues. Uh, only transient uh, uh, So what happened in, in the in the CH2? Uh, so it will be available in a local disk. When we choose persistent uh, VM queues, no? uh -huh. that, that, that information will be available in a local disk of the replica. Okay. So this, this is how it will be, will be configured. Okay. Okay, but that's one question. Thank you so much. I hope I answered yeah, the question. Yeah, got it. Yeah, any, anyone else other questions? Uh, I have a question. So, I mean, the the storing the state is nothing but uh, will it store the the flow the particular the flow state or uh, or any like a the variable are the payload state okay so storing the state in state basically the data data can be anything uh, a key value okay. pair, a token or a huge array 
any payload. Right? It just basically is throwing the payload in a way of that flow, like which you want to use or share across for future use case. Like for example, for example, simple example, take it as access token, correct? You want to store the token in the object store, which can be leveraged for multiple future API calls for a certain time, time period, correct? So yes. in a way, so there are different options. You can store a payload or a state, which we say in different mechanisms, different ways. So is there any way to like, I mean, uh, uh, for example, the part, one of the flow state got, uh, flow got, failed so the particular state got i mean so recorded is there any way to retry that particular flow again based on the state yeah so it's like like we have different options right? like like for example if you uh, choose new event no? correct mm -hmm. which basically store a state in jvm heap you cannot retry correct but if you choose object store while designing a solution as a person object store you can again retry to fetch the uh, information from the object store and again retry that thing same from the vm queues if you if you choose persistent vm queues uh, you can again uh, uh, retry to reprocess up, consume the message once again uh, upon retrying so depending upon the uh, options some options give you option to uh, uh, retry basically means you can reprocess because data will be available and some of the options does not doesn't give that option because the data will be lost uh, as due to it will be lost, it, it is hosted in JVM. So yeah, depending upon different options, uh, you can retry to reprocess the same data. Okay, thank you. Yeah, for example, in bad job, correct? In bad job scope, uh, the the whole data, last set data, get written in a persistent queue. If something goes wrong, we can retry again with that persistent queue that I have stored in persistent queue. We can retry to process those set of datas so yeah depending mm -hmm. upon the option you choose yeah okay thank you okay okay the movie, yeah. hi Vijay. Yeah. may i know the difference between persistent or non-persistent Okay, persistent and non-persistent basically means you no. Know, so in, in a simple word, when, when you say persistent, you know, data will be stored in a in a way that even if application or app crashes, the data will be still available. We can recover the data. In case of non-persistent, if if app or application crashes, we cannot recover it. It will be lost. Okay, we cannot retrieve or re recover it again. For example, in object store, if you say non-persistent. If you store something in non-persistent object store and app crashes or we close the application, correct? Uh, the uh, what we call the data will be lost from that place. We cannot recover or re uh, reuse that. In persistent object store, if you store something in persistent object store, even if the app crash, if we stop the application, we can again use. Uh, we can again recover that application data from that object store. So yeah, so that's the difference. Like it will be able to recover in persistent. It will be lost in non persistent thank you okay okay so moving on uh, so we have different ways correct so we, so in our when we design our solution okay depending upon the requirement uh, we can choose these ways and we can optimize our solution so based on the requirement whether we need faster performance or more reliable uh, solution so we have different options but Based upon that, we can choose uh, which one we can use solution. For example, mule event. So pro is that it is the fastest way to share state. Since it is stored in the JVM heap, which is in memory, this is the fastest way to share the state. Again, the cone is since it is in, in memory, it is not reliable. As soon as JVM crash or the flow complete, the state will be lost. You cannot retrieve or reuse it for some other or, or you, can, you can't share it to some other application. So depending upon a requirement, you can use mule event. If you have to share a state within the flow, then you can use mule event. It will be faster. Second is object store. Again, pro is state. Uh, state can be shared using the persistent object store, and it is also reliable. And again, it is uh, it is also faster. Not fast as mule event, but in general terms, it is faster and also reliable. In cons, what happened? We cannot use like a database, correct? This object store is not database. It, it is used to store information in a key value pair, but we cannot use query, we cannot 
fetch as based as query. Data is also stored only for 30 days. So whatever you store in the object store, it will be uh, it will be available in the object store for 30 days if you use persistent object store. Third option is uh, uh, in VM queues, correct? VM queues uh, again a state can be shared. It is also reliable, but slower than null event and object store. We generally use it for a single application. Okay, like in, in single application, we have multiple flows. We want to share some state or data from one flow to another flow. We can use VM queues, which is a better way to in performance wise. It is it is reliable and we can share it. And again, the cons it doesn't have any advanced queue feature. Like we cannot. Uh, it doesn't have what we call advanced feature of queues like GMS queue, Apache queue, or, or any point M queue. So don't uh, think of that. So VM queues generally uh, use in single application or to share the load uh, whenever we do horizontal scaling. We have multiple workers and there's multiple load. We can use VM queues to distribute load also. In batch job queues, so what if in batch job queue basically it is used for a uh, large data set. So if you have large data set, we generally use batch job scope. And badge of scope create this persistent queue, which is badge of queues, and which is help for large data set, which we can process large data set uh, without any issue. If something goes wrong, again, the badge of persistent queue will help us to restore and re recover those data and again retry. So again, when we whenever we talk about badge of queues, only con is, is a perform this so because when we deal with large data set now, if we choose persistent queue, correct, it will it goes outside uh, the worker which is basically in cloud of 1.09 it goes outside the worker which uh, it is goes into amazon sqs with persistent queue so due to this the performance issue will be there if you choose persistent queue generally we have a what we call a parameter uh, via which we can disable it but still uh, there is one issue in performance if you choose persistent queue which goes outside the worker and it, it might reduce the performance in a game Third is uh, last for the file based. Uh, second last is file based storage. File based storage again is a reliable storage storage because the data will be uh, written in a file in the worker itself. Only issue is that uh, like it is written in the worker uh, local disk. Okay, if we reprovision or what we call reprovision that worker, now if we delete and restart the worker, we will lose whole data. So that's the only issue uh, with that. And second thing, like if you want to share that file with some other other application, you cannot do that. Since it is stored in the worker memory, you cannot share it with other other application or other worker. And at last is external system, which is generally way of uh, storing the state. It is it has more performance, more reliability, and durability like SFTP servers, uh, Redis, ingrid memories. There are different ways we store like right? the database, endpoint MQs, queues, which we use basically. Uh, so they do have better uh, performance, reliability, and guarantees. But again, if you use that, it will uh, put us additional cost management, and it add complexity in the uh, in the solution. So these are basically pro and con, depending upon the requirement and use case. Uh, we can choose either of them uh, to share in a state, show store out a state, state uh, to optimize our solution in a better way. So any questions on this? Okay. Yeah, anyway. I have a query, Vijay. Yeah. So we have many options, right? Yeah. So what is the best way? I mean, it is up to requirement or specifications. So yeah. what is the best way we can use to hold the state? So there is no best way, correct? As such, correct? Uh, again, like like mentioned, based on the current. For example, like if you want to uh, process last data set correct mm -hmm. generally bad job queue will help you cannot you do not want to use vm queues or file based correct because you it will be more sensible to use bad job queues if you want to share your data uh, with external systems correct you can use external system queues external system uh, method like, which is sftp server or mqs or queues or database correct or you want to just temporarily hold the token or temporarily hold the some user information in object store you can use object store so depending upon the uh, the requirement and uh, anyone can choose there is no best as such everyone has pro and con uh, in, in terms of it okay yeah. just to give a brief idea like the, 
anything everything cannot be best no one cannot best De depending on the environment one will be better than other so that's why each have one pro and cons uh, each uh, options hey hi we get pawn here yeah so can you please explain us the uh, like uh, the cons of the bad job queues uh, you mentioned performance issues right or right. you mentioned aws uh, if you don't mind can you please explain us again yeah so what happened here now so so basically what happened uh, persistent uh, so when you choose persistent queue in cloud 1.0 this option to choose persistent one correct persistent queue in the runtime manager okay so when right. when you whenever we choose that option na, so what happened this bad job queue bad job queues also a persistent queue so to use that queue na, it goes outside that persistent queue which i enable right that it use that queue itself and when we ch uh, ch uh, check that it goes outside the worker because in worker it will be much faster it goes outside which is amazon sql service it uh, it call from there it store there and then fetch from there so there is some performance issue rather than in memory so if you don't check the persistent queue na, the persistent queue will get created inside the worker itself in in the ec2 disk or the local disk itself so it will be much faster to fetch uh, and uh, process the record from the worker itself than from the amazon sql that's why there's a performance issue when we deal with large asset i hope it makes sense here. yeah vijay thank you got it yeah yeah that's the difference it is vijay, a question yeah uh, like uh if we are getting a uh, huge data like a big file like uh let's say two or three gb or five gb of a file from uh, some systems okay mm -hmm. and that we need to proceed then uh file based storage will also work right not only batch job queues yeah file based storage in file based storage what happened uh, since depending upon the cloud or worker or the replica uh, uh, size no? that uh -huh. file that storage get assigned it is not a uh, huge so depending upon the worker or the replica size a storage get assigned to us which we can leverage so generally uh, it is not recommended to use file based for a huge data set correct uh, okay, but if you're if you're not using file based storage, then uh, let's say if you got uh, so from data from the source of five GB or uh, ten GB of Excel sheet, that we need to be processed to target system. So in between, if something uh, application get crashed and it goes to OOM out of memory, then how we can handle that? If you're not using file based. Yeah. So what happens to, when we say file based storage? No, this file based storage is of Mule itself. Okay. And then, and then we have external system, which is SFTP subject. We can use SFTP basically to store this five, five GB of information in a SFTP server in a file. Okay. If you're talking about specifically file based no? storage, which is a mule. Okay. In, in mule worker, we have a specific cloud of worker. Cloud of worker have one GB or two GB of, uh, what we call uh, uh, space, which, which they, they provide, correct? Okay. That space we use for temporary basis uh, to uh, manage our state. So we generally don't use a uh, large data set in mule file based storage. We can use external systems, which is SFTP and put it uh, in a SFTP server where we have bigger size to store those files. Okay. So that is an external system, like yeah, SFTP system. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. If you have that, that, that big file. Or if you want to process in queue, then again it will break the record into multiple sets. Then you can you can use that job also. Break the multiple records and then process uh, in, in those batch record. But before entering into batch job, won't it be failed because of OM issue? Bad job issue, I don't think so. Uh, what happened is it will since it will be a streamable record, it will be a, a repeatable streamable, it will keep on putting data it will not store whole 5 gb once okay it will pile up it will break up the those data into the those repeatable streams and then do it one by one it will not just uh, put everything in if, if, okay. I'm wrong, if i'm wrong somewhere if you no know someone better they can check yeah currently we are facing this issue that's why i just asked working on that. oh okay yeah. Uh, so the same thing. Uh, see, if we implement bad job, so bad job implemented inside our mule, right? Mm -hmm. So before before passing to bad job, first we need to retrieve the the whole 
the the payload into our mule flow right in that case if the file size is as he mentioned uh, 3 gb or 4 gb how it will uh, uh, keep in memory in mule event it cannot hold uh, that uh, huge payload right before uh, sending to batch uh, then yeah, obviously we will get out of memory issue no yeah. exactly that was my question yeah, yeah, yeah. So see, my, what my understanding is, I might be wrong. Anyone uh, who have better knowledge on this, what happens uh, in the uh, in a mule? Nurse, we have a streamable input. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think file based in the sense whenever you are using the file connector. So what you do, you give one path, right? Let's say you are working in your local system. What you do, you give your local system path like a, a Windows somewhere, right? In the folder, you will store that. But when you are working in the cloud with the file connector, what you do, the path will be somewhere under the SRC main resource. Okay, so 0.1 worker will have 500 MB memory, right? Mm -hmm. So within this memory, that file connector will use that capacity somehow capacity to store the file. So it is just to leverage some uh, small files. It's not like to uh, you know dump big data. It's it's having the capacity of 0 0.5 GB, uh, uh, 500 MB, right? So how we can store uh, a GB memory? You cannot do that. So for that, you have various ways. Like, let's say you have a file, 1 GB is coming. Okay. Uh, there are various methods. Like if you want to divide the file size with the uh, into multiple chunks with the file size, that also you can do in Mule. Okay. Otherwise, if you want to store something, the file which is coming, uh, let's say your file is going to crash uh, or you are getting any error. In that case, you just use one uh, error handling section and in the error handling section, you write it to somewhere, the local uh, like SFTP or somewhere. You definitely have to use something external. Uh, this is my idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. So generally what happened is just to give you my idea now. So here what happened? So there is a streamable, streamable input, correct? And the streamable input have one option, correct? How much of memory byte it will pick in to basically store. So this is uh, this is one way to do it, correct? To set the limit basically in batch job to pick those file one by one. Uh, like mentioned by one guy, correct? Break, break that into multiple sets of data. Or you can use external system basically to store that file, right? And read from there in part by part, break those multiple part and then pick one by one, one, one file to basically process. Okay. Uh, there was one guy like said uh, that we can use the streaming also, right? If you're using the SFTP and we can call the streaming. How does it work? Like I might be go out of topic, but just wanted to know how that streaming helps in that. So streaming, uh, how is streaming helps now basically you know what happened in the streaming now so it basically automatically it divide the data into chunks okay like we have a streamable a file of a gb is coming in coming it just break that file automatically into some chunks okay like 500 kb 1 mb that amount of data it will process one by one pick it one by one into its its memory and then process it rather than uh, allowing whole data to be uh, be fetched in at one go Oh, is it that is a power oh, thing? Is it? I think one thing to add here, I don't it doesn't take the whole file into the memory mm -hmm. from the source itself, it takes into chunks um, mm -hmm. in a repeatable file stream yeah. and then it processes it. So yeah. the whole file doesn't come into the memory and uh, we do, go, don't go out of the space uh, when using the streams. Right. And if you use like SFTP operator or or like S3 operator where you have files, you will always have this option of uh, streaming. Stream there. Okay. So streaming uh, will just take the data in chunks and will process instead of taking a full load data. Is it? Is, is it correct? Yep, correct. Okay. Okay, thanks, Siddharth. Thanks, Vijay. Yeah, so we had the same issue, correct? In our, uh, one of those, one uh, implementations what we have done is the basic way is just to simplify this thing na? we can break those whole file na? if i give file whatever file here into the multiple chunks into some external uh, file server location and then pick basically 
one by one uh, through file. You can read file one by one to process it. It is much uh, reliable or much better solution in the inner way. Okay, breaking down chunks in the, using the streaming only itself is it? Not streaming actually. Actually, breaking down using a, a logic, not using then actually breaking down the file you file into multiple uh, smaller chunk. Right? It will make more use because if something goes wrong, na, uh, you can mm -hmm. basically reprocess file also, or you can store those files in some other location to reprocess them also later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. Thanks, thanks, Vijay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hi, Vijay Vamsi here. Yeah. So, what is the appointment for uh, different states? Uh, state storage uh, you have mentioned apart from this file-based storage and external systems, because like uh, for these two, uh, they completely depend upon the infrastructure we have. And how about the uh, mule event, object store, VMQ, and batch of queues? Sorry, I didn't get the first part. You mentioned the upper limit. Like, uh, what is the allowable uh, memory storage provided for each uh, different state storage? Oh, okay. Maximum uh, storage. Uh, okay, okay. So in mule event now, if you look in the mule event, correct, it is an in memory in memory object, correct? So for example, yes. like mention 1.0.1, if we uh, v check v code, then it will, it will have 500 MB, correct? Yes. So depending upon that, you can use a mule event to store that value, 500 MB of data, correct? Maximum, but generally it doesn't go that much. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think 80 or 90 percent kind of. Uh, uh, it, it, it will crash in the JVM itself. Then in object store, object store we can store multiple uh, unlimited key. Basically, there is no limitation mm -hmm. as such, but, but, but value have a limitation. The value which will store okay. up to Cash 10 MB. Uh, only 10 MB itself. We cannot go beyond 10 MB in value in object store. Okay. Okay. And same for VMQ is also correct. Uh, it happens. There is no what we call as limit data, but mm -hmm. store, since basically we can store it, it will pass on from one flow to other. OK. okay. Yeah, and back okay. edge of queue, again, same thing, like uh, depending Based upon the EV course, how much we have. Mm -hmm. getting it, getting it. So uh, underline is like everything will be related to that uh, V core, which we are having, uh, which we configure for that application. Correct, correct. Because basically, we are using real application infrastructure itself. Uh, so that's mm -hmm. why it's dependent upon the, what, what infrastructure of uh, V core we are using here. So, overall okay. to improve performance or the the storage capacity so yeah okay yeah thank you Isaac. okay mm, if you're good we can move on to the state implementation okay which is generally about object store and vm queues so we have different runtimes like uh, brand uh, custom of runtime runtime fabric Cloud of 1.0, Cloud of 2.0. We will just talk about 1.0 and 2.0. How the Mule basically implement this object store and VMQs in that. Yeah, basically. Just to give a brief idea, na, so the uh, the virtual the object store and VMQ, right, how they place in Cloud of 1.0. I don't have any picture as such, but I will try to demonstrate uh, in words. So in our Cloud of Worker, correct? In Cloud of Worker, uh, we have JVM heap, correct? One in memory space. And then we have uh, EC2 disk, basically the Amazon EC2 disk, where the, uh, where we store the, basically, uh, where we have disk to store something, correct? When we say non-persistent, uh, everything get stored in JVM heap, non-persistent object store, and the transient or persistent uh, VM queues, if you don't know select persistent, will be available in JVM heap. Non persistent object store and uh, VM queues will be available in JVM heap. And when we check persistent object store and persistent queue, the persistent object store will be outside the worker, which is again like Amazon service, which, which is used, which is object store v2. And if you choose persistent queue, both tra transient and persistent, both will be outside the worker. It will be Amazon SQS service. So how it behave, you can see if object store is a persistent, again, it, since it is outside the worker, even if worker or app restart or crash or redeploy, the state will survive. It will not lose a state or data. Since again, this is outside the worker, we can share the state uh, uh, with all worker of application. 
in case of non non persistent since since object store will be in the jbm heap as usual if something goes wrong worker or app restart or crashes state will again be lost and as mentioned uh, in non persistent object store uh, the data is in jbm heap in a worker itself so it cannot be shared with other worker or other applications in vm queues uh, in vm queues what happened not uh, persistent or tra transient both uh, is available in the uh, JVM heap itself. If you don't choose persistent queue, this option in runtime manager. If you don't choose that, both whether persistent or transient, both will be available in the JVM heap or disk itself. If it is available in JVM heap or disk, if something goes wrong, app or worker will start crash, the state will be lost. And same thing, it cannot be shared since it is in the JVM heap. If you choose persistent queue, it goes outside the worker, the state will survive and it can be shared also. Any question on this behavior of OS or VM queues in Cloud of 1.0? If anyone have. Okay. Yeah, anyone have something? Okay. Uh, coming to the last part, which is behavior of object store and VM queues in Cloud of 2.0. So in Cloud of 2.0, how it works? So basically, we have in Cloud 2.0 we have a replica. Like in 1.0 we have workers, we have we have, we have, we have uh, replicas, okay. And object store again, if it's persistent, it will be outside. Object store behavior is kind of same here. The persistent state will survive and it can be shared between the different worker. We using the OS v2. If non-persistent, again, it is inside JVM heap. It will be state will be lost, and the state can't be shared. In case of uh, VM queues, no? so what happened in Cloud 2.0, we don't have persistent queue. Like in uh, 1.0, we don't have persistent queue in uh, 2.0. So there's, there's a cluster or non-clustered part, OK? When we say clustered, a Hazel cast is basically used between the two replica to share a state. Whatever state is available in replica 1 via Hazel cast, it can be shared to the replica 2. In case of worker, we have worker 1 or worker 2. In, in the Cloud, we have replica using Hazelcast, it can share the state. So if we choose non-cluster, okay, if it's not cluster, there is no Hazelcast, there is no uh, Hazelcast to store, or there's no cluster basically, then in persistent or transient queue, no? if something goes, goes wrong, app or worker restart crashed, since the data is stored in the JVM, the state will be lost. And same, it cannot be shared between the different replicas also. But if, if uh, Persistent and transit is clustered, okay? If you use Hazelcast basically to cluster the two replica, then a state will survive. Since we have more than one replica, if something goes wrong in one replica, then other will be available to, uh, this, other will be available where state will survive. And again, yeah, state can be shared between the replicas as we use Hazelcast. So any question in uh, behavior of object store and VMQs in Cloud 2.0? This is very generic behavior of object store and VM queues. So object store behavior in Cloud Hub 1.0 and 2.0 are same, right? Yeah, it, it behaves same because object store V2 is also available uh, in the Cloud of 2.0. So that's why behavior remains same. Yep, and yeah, last we have, if you have any questions regarding the whole uh, session from start till now, yeah, we can discuss.